In this video, I was correcting my student Yoon on how to throw a perfect long knee and jump knee. So with this knee, Yoon was flat footed when kneeing, so we had to correct him to elevate up onto his tippy toes with his standing leg. This time Yoon elevated up to his tippy toes, but he pivoted, making his knee turn to the side. So I corrected him to not pivot when kneeing. This time Yoon elevated onto his tippy toes and did not pivot, but he kneed too upwards, so I had to correct him to knee more inwards. This time Yoon elevated up on his tippy toes, kneed inwards, but his kneeing toes were flexed upwards, so I corrected him to knee with his toes pointing downwards to make his knee more sharp. This time Yoon did everything correctly, but he stepped a tad too close. Distance is power. We want to throw a longer knee by kneeing from further away. This was a perfect knee. Yoon elevated up onto his tippy toes, pointed his kneeing toes downwards, kneed inwards instead of upwards, and finally took a smaller step and extended his hips to hit the target. So how do you throw a perfect long knee? In my opinion, here is a perfect knee. Number one, we elevate up onto the tippy toes for more reach and power, and we did not pivot. Two, we extend the hips for more reach and power. Three, we throw the knee in a diagonally upwards path, not too upwards and not too inwards, like an airplane drifting off into the sky. If we need too upwards, we completely miss the target, unless we're tall enough to knee the head. Four, we point our kneeing toes downwards to make our knee nice and sharp. Five, we flare our kneeing heel 45 degrees to the side to throw a spike knee, giving the knee the power and trajectory of a Muay Thai roundhouse kick. And six, you can see that we do not step in too close to knee, which would take away power. And we don't step too far away to knee where we would not reach a target. We step in just enough that we can fully elongate and extend our hips to land the knee. But that is not to say we have to always land a perfect knee, especially in sparring or in a fight. This is just a goal. Even if we don't point our toes downwards like I did here, it is still a good and powerful knee landing. If I'm being extremely picky, I'd say this knee here, I stepped in too close and jammed myself on the knee. But again, still a knee that landed and got me my points and still caused damage. And here are a bunch of other knees I would consider landing pretty well, but may not be absolutely perfect the way I taught it. But again, it won't always come out perfectly, but we still try to practice as perfectly as possible. For example, when we throw a punch when hitting pads, hitting the heavy bag or shadow boxing, we always want to keep the opposite side hand up. But let's be honest, if you Google Floyd Mayweather right now, one of the best boxers in the world, the first photo you see is him jabbing and his rear hand is down but you won't see him dropping his rear hand down when hitting pads, the heavy bag, or shadow boxing. In this jump knee, Yoon was not scissoring his legs for more power and flexing his toes upwards, making his knee less sharp. This was a perfect knee, scissoring his legs and pointing his toes downwards. Now how do we throw a perfect jump knee? In my opinion, a perfect jump knee, we want to, one, push off of both legs. Two, we obviously want to jump and get up into the air. Three, we want to lean forward so our body is slanted, leaning over our opponent's head, which allows our knee to drive into our target. Four, our knee is thrown in a diagonally upwards motion, just like the long knee. Five, we point our kneeing toes downwards to make the knee sharp. And six, we want to scissor our opposite side knee backwards for more balance and power from the scissoring motion of our legs. Here is another jump knee that I would consider landing pretty well, but not as perfect as I did not scissor my opposite leg enough which generated less power. Here is another jump knee that landed really well, but not perfect because not only did I not scissor my opposite leg back at all, but I also didn't lean forward and over my opponent's head which caused me to throw the knee in a completely upwards motion. If you need two upwards on a jump knee, you risk falling backwards. Fortunately, I was still able to land the flying knee here. And in this jump knee, 
I only pushed off of one leg, which does not allow me to scissor my legs into the knee and generates much less power. Nevertheless, I would still consider it a decent knee that landed. And here are a few other decent jump knees that landed, but again, I'm always looking to throw it more perfectly. Now, before you guys go, I'd like to share with you one of my favorite programs I've made, how to hit and hold pads. We all know how hitting pads is crucial for fighters or martial art enthusiasts because it is one of the closest types of training that actually simulates a fight. It not only develops flow, fluidity, and technique in your striking, but it is a great way to develop cardio because you can hit with full power. But with that said, from years of coaching, we've seen too many people injure themselves from incorrectly holding pads, and we've also seen people injure themselves from incorrectly hitting pads. In this program, Coach Nick and I are going to teach you exactly how to hold pads safely for every strike with beginner and advanced variations. We will not only show how you should throw and land every strike on a set of pads for maximum power, but how to train on the technical side of pad work, like how to chain together strikes, defense, and counters, and pretty much how to create an endless amount of freestyle combinations all on the pads. For more information, check out the link below.